So how to win big when you are most likely the only offer on a property, right? So you might be coming here from our video, kind of a parallel video on how to win big in multiple offer situations. A lot of great info there, but this is different. So when you know uh, and you do need to find out. If you know that there are no other offers currently on a property, you can slow down a little bit, okay? We can pace ourselves and begin to do a little investigation up front, right? And this is where it is really essential to have a world-class, full-time, dedicated expert real estate agent advocating and leading and guiding you, right? They are the best person to do this for you. Um, but when that person is able to do some digging, and really all that means is to have a conversation or two with the seller or their agent to understand what their primary core driving motivations are, right? What most people say is their reason for buying or selling. It's not necessarily untrue, but it's not their actual true, deepest, most clear motivation. People say things like, well, we want to move. Well, really, they want to move to be able to deliver a world-class education to their children. So there's a deeper driving, more meaningful reason than just we want a bigger house. There's, there's usually some deeper motivation. So the more we can understand that from the seller, and of course, the more we understand our own motivations and a great agent will help you do that as a buyer or a seller, depending on which situation you're in. But clearly in our buyer series here as a buyer, we've got to know our own non-negotiable items and our core motivations, but we don't always know the sellers. So a great agent can help us learn more about the seller's motivations. And as we learn that, we can do our very best in a negotiation when we're making this offer to give the seller as much of what they really want as we possibly can, as much of what motivates them, help them achieve their dreams as well. They're, they don't always have to be in conflict. Obviously, when it comes down to price, one side wants more and one side wants to pay less, but that's not even always the case. Sometimes a seller needs a certain number and doesn't really care beyond that. Sometimes the buyer doesn't care as much about money as they care about other things. And that's where the good stuff happens. When we learn that time is actually more important than speed to this seller or the ability to grab a few things and leave the rest of their stuff and go is really important to them. Or the ability to sell now, but rent the house back for a little while to get their money, but stay for a little while is actually more important than total price. If we learn things like that about the seller and we can give those things to them, then we can really usually get most or if not all of what we want. And nobody feels like they got taken advantage of or they lost. Negotiation is not what it appears to be in the movies a lot of time. It's not best done when there's a clear winner and a clear loser and someone's happy and someone's angry. It's best done in a mutually beneficial way where, way where both, both parties feel like they got what they wanted or at least they were treated fairly and got what they needed, right? So if we are able to say to a seller, listen, we would be happy to close a little earlier, let you guys lease back if we could do it at this price, there's a really good chance that you are going to get a much better deal on a property and really not lose anything. As a matter of fact, this is another great way to, to get additional value. A lot of times sellers will leave things like media equipment or patio furniture or non-attached appliances like wine chillers or things like that. Um, you know, furniture that was really custom to a certain room, but isn't necessarily attached. When it comes down to really understanding their needs and making a real legitimate attempt to deliver on them, we can actually get better deals for ourselves. So the more we can learn from them, when we're not really rushed by the multiple offer situation, the more we can get what we want. Because if we give them what we what they want, they're highly likely to give us what we want, at least a lot more likely than in a normal cutthroat, toe-to-toe, winner-loser type of negotiation. So the big picture here is when you're not up against multiple offers and you know you're the only party expressing serious interest in a property, there's probably a better deal to be had. But the best way to go about that, as opposed to just coming in with some super low offer, totally slant into all of your benefits, and you have an angry, reluctant seller, 
to try to fully understand their needs, their desires, as well as why maybe you're the only person making an offer, why there's not a lot of interest. Now, sometimes it's market driven, sometimes it's property driven, sometimes it's based on the marketing and the agent or the seller and their attitude. But the more you know about that, the more you can try to make them happy while getting a world-class deal for yourself. So as much as that's more strategic than really technical and a whole lot of specific strategy, that is the strategy and it can work really, really well. Your generosity will motivate their reciprocity of generosity, meaning when you're kind and try to deliver on what they need, they'll try to do the same thing back to you and allow you to walk away with what might be, what probably will be a really, really great deal. So check out the next video in our series here about home inspections. This one scares the heck out of a lot of people. This is the single scariest document in the entire process of buying a home, the inspection report. And we'll talk to you about how to approach that in a way that can be really, really helpful and not so scary. Also check out the whole series here and make sure you're getting the full picture of how to approach home buying where you can win really big. I'll talk to you on the next one.